So we had a bad idea. <laughs> Heyo, it's Oishi, welcome back. I had a bad idea recently, <laughs> and it has to do with a short film. My English teacher posted in our classroom home website about this short film that operates in Toronto, and it's for students, it's for students by students, and I read through the information and I was like, hey, this sounds like kind of a cool opportunity. <laughs> I've been wanting to make a short film for a while now, I just have not been able to because A, I don't have the time, and B, we're in the middle of a panoramic so I can't go anywhere or see anybody or do anything out there in the world. But I saw this and I was like, hey, maybe this could actually work because again, it's for students by students so it's probably not gonna be like high art. <laughs> I know for a fact that anything I make would not be high art. So I just texted my friend Shane randomly one day. I was like, so you wanna make a short film? And she texted back immediately and said yes. We both really love film, so I knew for a fact that she would probably be down for this. So we were off to the races. We had our crew, me and Shane, our crew of exactly two people. And we had our budget, which was zero, <laughs> zero dollars. This is not a low budget film, it is a no budget film. <laughs> Knowing that we had those restrictions of it just being us and having to spend absolutely no money on it, um, we came up with a potential timeline of how things were gonna go. The final submission date is the 14th, I believe, so we knew we had to get to work quick. First, we had to come up with a story, because that's generally how these things work. We agonized over it for a while and we eventually came up with this sort of coming of age moment where we're moving from one part of our life to another and we're gonna combine an immigration plot in there because immigrant, Shane is also an immigrant, and we're like, hey, why not put some of that in there as well? We both really liked this idea, we were super excited to get started. The plan was that um, Shane and her younger sister would be the main cast of the film, and then I would be there as crew to film, to direct, things like that. We were planning to meet up one day over the weekend, we would have our masks, we would be filming outside, distanced, so that we didn't spread Rona to each other. But then we found out that things weren't completely opened up here, and that was kind of a blow to us because, I don't know about you, but I don't really look at what what level of lockdown we're in because either way I'm home. I'm not going anywhere. I am sitting in this room doing absolutely nothing. Turns out that things weren't really opened up so we couldn't actually meet up to film this thing. Which meant that we had to go back to the drawing board to figure out something else because if I can't be there to film then Shane can't be on camera because Shane has to film. So we had to start again. We knew that we still had Shane's younger sister as our primary cast. She was the only one who was going to be in it so we had to come up with something where there was only one cast member and that we could do in a relatively short period of time that also didn't demand too much of her younger sister because she is young, she's a kid, so we didn't want to put too much stress on her. So we thought and we thought there is a pretty funny text thread of us just texting for around 45 minutes thinking of things to put in this film, coming up with, you know, a plot. <laughs> because films generally have those. But we eventually landed on something that we both really liked and that we thought we could do with the restrictions that we had. Our initial shooting date was April 3rd. It was gonna be a long weekend, so we would be able to have enough time to do this and not be too stressed out with school. Um, but that actually didn't end up happening for two reasons. One was that April 3rd was not sunny and we really wanted it to be sunny because the bulk of the film is shot outside and so we thought if it was sunny it would be really easy to have that natural light and it would immediately look that much better. But it wasn't sunny on April 3rd. And the second reason that we couldn't do it on April 3rd was because we didn't have a script. <laughs> look, we wanted to write it throughout the week but then life happened, school happened, and that didn't get done. <laughs> So I sat down on the Saturday on April 3rd and I wrote the script and then we FaceTimed for a couple hours and we were doing our little edits, adjusting it to make it the best that it could possibly be. And then we were ready. So on that Saturday, on April 3rd, we actually spent a few hours doing the interior scenes and the voiceover because there is a substantial amount of voiceover. In fact, a lot of the story is told through voiceover, not like the character speaking to the audience, but two characters speaking to each other. It's strange when I say it, but it makes sense when you see it. The interior scene was literally like one scene, so we were done with that pretty quickly. It was the voiceover that took a little bit longer. Again, Shane's sister is the primary cast, but Shane herself was playing a different character. She just wasn't appearing on screen. 
she was just the voice. And so we spent a little bit of while doing that. The next day, April 4th, Sunday, was very, very sunny. And funnily enough, that Sunday was the only day throughout the week that was going to be as sunny as it was. I looked at the forecast and everything else was like partly cloudy. So we got really lucky that there was that one really nice day. We went out there and we did all of our exterior scenes. And by we, I mean they. Look, we are doing this remotely. So they are at their house doing the actual shooting. I am in this chair in my room, FaceTiming, just trying to be there in spirit and help with as much as I could. Because this day was the bulk of the film, there were many of things that happened and went wrong. <laughs> On the day that we did all the interior shots, the plan was that Shane would be filming with her phone camera and she was on her laptop FaceTiming me so that we could set up shots together and still be able to talk and figure out things as they happened. That was fine. That worked pretty well and I'm actually really happy with the things that we got done that day. The next day when we actually went outside, there was more problems. <laughs> Because Shane was outside, she couldn't FaceTime me at the same time as filming because she couldn't take her laptop out. And we only had one phone at first. So when you're FaceTiming and you go to the camera, it actually doesn't give you an option to film the video. So what happened is that we would FaceTime, we would set up shots, we would figure out what we had to do, when we had to do it, all of that fun stuff. And then we would hang up, Shane would film the stuff, send them to me in iMessage, in texting, and then we would review them, we would get more takes if necessary, or we would move on to the next scene and rinse and repeat. It was definitely slower going than the first day when we were inside because of all of the hanging up and the starting and stopping and the texting and reviewing. But in the end, it did work well. Something else was that Shane's phone was having life issues. It really just wanted to die so, so badly. <laughs> she was on 40%, I think, when they went out there, and then an hour later she was at like 9% and panicking. <laughs> because of the fact that the charge was running out so, so quickly, we did have to rush some of the scenes that we did. So we rushed the setting up the shots and the explaining. Like, I was trying my best to like text everything to her. Also, they had trouble hearing me, probably because they were outside and it was windy. So the amount of times that we had to like repeat what we had to say, it was a mess. <laughs> Anyway, her charge is running out. They're trying to get the shots as quickly as possible, but also trying to get them good and speeding through it while also trying to get good shots is not a good combo. So there was a lot of stuff that we had to keep filming and filming and refilming. Eventually the phone was gone. It was almost dead. So they went inside. We took an hour break um, to let the phone charge back up and review the stuff that we already had. The stuff that we had was pretty good. Like I was pretty happy with it for the most part, especially seeing as we're in two different places and her phone was just having lots of issues. But when they went back out there, they actually had another phone. So this meant that Shane could FaceTime me while also filming. So we didn't have to do the whole hanging up, starting, stopping thing. But we had another issue. <laughs> By this point, it was like 6.20 p.m.-ish, and the sun was beginning to set, which meant that we had shadows now. <laughs> it was fine to have Shane's sister have a shadow because the idea of the film is that she is spending a day doing this one task, and so we thought that it was okay to have her shadow, but the problem was Shane's shadow. So she had to maneuver herself in a way that her shadow wouldn't be in the shot, but then she also had to try and get the shot that we wanted, which that was hard. But in the end, I think it was fine. I think because the sun was setting too, the light got even better. It was more of this soft yellowy orangey feel, and it was just really nice. Another thing, we had props. <laughs> So, one of the props we had was a homemade pair of wings, and they were jank. <laughs> like, the most jank pair of wings that you have ever seen. <laughs> but, again, it was kind of fine, because the idea is that Shane's sister, her character, is making these wings. And so, because she's a kid, it's okay if they're a little bit jank, because, you know, she's a kid. <laughs> Kids make jank stuff sometimes. I just thought it was really funny how jank those wings were, but for the purposes of the film, I think they worked. But finally, after hours of FaceTiming and screaming over <laughs> her phone running out of charge and screaming at the people in the background who were messing up the shot, we weren't actually screaming at them. That was internal screaming. After hours of doing that, we finally had all the shots that we needed and that was it. We were done shooting. That was a wrap on set, if you will. As of now, the film hasn't been edited because Shane is going to do the editing because she has all those lovely, lovely editing skills, um, but hopefully it's not trash. And if it is trash, hopefully Shane can use her fancy editing to save it a little bit. So this was a learning experience. There were a lot of things that I think I took away from it. Number one was because we were remote, it was 
quite hard at times. I'm at my house, Shane's at hers, we're both collaborating in a way that is kind of hard because we're not in the same place to be able to be on the same page all the time. Because I wasn't physically there, I learned that I had to be very, very specific of what exactly each shot would entail. So I might describe something one way and see it exactly how I wanted it, but then obviously Shane's not in my head, so she might see it in a different way, and then that would have some miscommunication, so we would have to like redo the shots and get it in a way that we both understood what was going on. We both had to be very specific on what we wanted, and me especially because I'm not physically there to help set up the shots and work through the entire thing. I also learned that when you're doing a no-budget film, <laughs> you've just got to use what you have. For example, we needed cardboard for the wings, but at the last minute we realized that we didn't have any cardboard, um, so we decided that, okay, let's just get a bunch of paper and we'll tape it together and make it in a wing shape. That's the next best thing. But then we found an old project of Shane's sister's that she didn't need anymore. So we thought we can just cut this up and use that. So in that way, we were able to adapt and just pick and choose things that we already had lying around the house that would be able to work. Same with costumes. We found some, we actually found a really cute costume for her sister to wear just out of things she already owned. And it also fit with the character because this character is kind of hopeful and whimsical. On the flip side of the use what we had, you know that advice that everyone says, don't work with kids and don't work with animals? Yeah. <laughs> Funnily enough, the only things that we had were kids and animals. We essentially ended up working with the two things that people say never to work with. I will say that Shane's sister was very good in her role. I think she did a great job. She's adorable and she got exactly what we wanted. She was able to take direction very well and honestly, she has a future. <laughs> I'm saying that right now. The animal we only needed for like one shot and <laughs> that one shot was chaotic. They have a bunny. She's absolutely adorable, but also apparently she chooses violence <laughs> on a regular basis. They brought the bunny into the bedroom to be able to get the shot and in the two seconds that she was there she peed <laughs> so so we didn't get a perfect shot of the bunny and honestly if it if the shot doesn't look good we're just not going to use it so they got bunny pee on her bed for no reason if we don't use the shot <laughs> we also had to really trust each other now obviously we're friends we've been friends for years now we obviously trust each other a lot but this was a new experience in the way that we were doing a project remotely. I had to trust that Shane would be able to get the shots that we needed. She had to trust that I had the script up, that I knew exactly what was going on and that I was leading us through this because she didn't have the script and because she didn't have all of the other stuff. It was a bonding exercise, a team building exercise, if you will. But I think we did a good job in the end and we were able to collaborate really well with the resources that we had. And the last thing we learned was to just have fun and not really take things seriously. As difficult as this was sometimes, it was also a ton of fun. Like, we just spent two days making a movie from two different locations over FaceTime. I don't know how many people can say they've done that. We can though, and it was just, it was really funny at times. It was just a great way to spend time with a friend that I haven't seen physically in person in, oh my god, over a year now. <laughs> Obviously we want the film to be good, but I think also because we were just having fun and not taking ourselves too seriously that we were able to joke around and just scream about phones dying and frolic around in a field. I mean, they got to frolic in a field. I unfortunately didn't. I just sat in this chair, but maybe I'll go frolic in a field now because they've inspired me. <laughs> Overall, it was a really fun experience. Again, the film hasn't been edited, so I don't know what the final product will look like. Hopefully it'll be good. Like I said, the final submission date for the festival is the 14th, so we will be submitting and we have no idea if we're even gonna be accepted. I don't know what the caliber of films that are submitted into this festival are like. I mean, they are all students and it's in the rules that they have to be students. Our age and people our age generally have the same equipment that we have, which is phones and like phone mics and things like that. So who knows, maybe they will all be very small and cute and amateur like the one that we made. I don't know if we'll be accepted. We probably won't be, but if anything happens, maybe I'll film updates to let you know. But that's all I have for right now. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Comment down below and let me know what was the jankiest part of this entire thing. Um, if it was the whole FaceTiming collab, that was probably it. That was so janky. But we did what we had to do. If you enjoy this sort of stuff and you want to see more of it from me, please make sure to hit that subscribe button because I make new videos every Friday. Also, I'm on platforms, so if you want to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Goodreads, and Letterboxd, those links will be in the description down below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!